this podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the U.S. and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Mark DePristo. Mark is the founder and CEO at Big Hat Biosciences. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, JP. It's fabulous to be here. Oh, it's our pleasure. So, Mark, let's start with yourself. Can you give us a brief background of your journey in tech, from where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and what's led you to, to where you're at today as the, the founder and CEO of Big Hat Bioscience? My experience in tech is, has been really about 20 years in the making. I started as a computer science math undergrad at Northwestern University outside of Chicago and loved that. I was doing all sorts of mobile robotics and programming languages and won a Marshall scholarship that sent me to England. And while I was there, I decided that I would study biochemistry. And so I got a PhD in biochemistry. And that's really where I got the the bug for understanding biology. I actually moved there to Harvard and was an experimentalist for three years studying the beta-lactamase enzyme, uh, which digests beta-lactam antibiotics, but ultimately decided that I didn't want to become an academic and decided that I would leave and learn more about the business of biology. So I joined LEK Consulting, which is a boutique biotech consulting firm in London and Boston and and now San Francisco and and I believe globally. And that was a fabulous experience learning all about how drugs are valued, how M&A works in the biotech and biopharma world. But ultimately, although I was really enjoying this work, the Broad Institute called a good friend of mine, Paul DeBacher, who's now at Vertex Pharmaceuticals, called and said, hey, we've got these new next-gen sequencers. We'd love if you could come and, and help us make use of these things to understand human genetic variation. And That was the start of a five-year run that ultimately I left as the co-director of medical genetics, building a lot of the tool chain that underlies next-gen sequencing these days. After five years at the Broad, though, I again wanted to go back into the commercial world and join Stan Lapidus and uh, a whole bunch of other now close friends of mine at a company called Synaptics. So this is outside of Boston and Lexington. And we had a a goal there to run a multi-omics trial to find biomarkers for autism in the blood with the idea of of developing a diagnostic test that would let us accelerate uh, the early diagnosis of autism. And at the time it was, this was 2013. So this was a pretty ambitious program with a multi-omics trial at that stage. And we got a a very broad multi-omics data set on 1500 kids really looked at everything from genetic variation to changes in metabolites to try to predict risk for autism development. And although there are lots of signals, collectively, they weren't enough to really move the needle uh, clinically. So we shut down synaptics and everyone went on to their next roles. I had the pleasure at that point of joining one of our board members, a guy named Andy Conrad at Google X where he was starting Google X Life Sciences. So I joined Google X in 2015, saw it become Verily, and as Verily evolved more and more independently of Google, I decided that I really wanted to remain at Google and move to Google's then called Google Brain, but is now called Google AI, which is their big AI research arm, where I spent three years growing a team focused on applying AI tech to life sciences problems generally. And that was a great experience and really was foundational in in the the thinking that led to Big Hat. And it was an amazing opportunity to be at the nexus of AI tech development. and, and, And I got to see kind of everything in a large scale tech company and apply that to bio for many years. So it was a a great experience. 
Thank you for sharing that journey because it really helps lay the foundation for what would become your idea to set up your own organization and create big hot biosciences. So talk to us about that, where the idea started to form and what ultimately led you to launch in Big Hat? So the real origin of Big Hat, I think grew out of a shared frustration with that it sort of happened independently both to myself and to my co-founder, Peyton Greenside. And the best way to understand that frustration is to rewind the clock into 2017 or 18. It was clear at that point in time that AI was really changing the game in machine learning. Deep learning tech in particular was solving problems that were essentially impossible to solve five years earlier. Lots of the image processing algorithms were transformative. There were transformers appearing. People were doing large scale language models. It was really obvious within Google and in, within Stanford where, where Peyton spent most of her time that this technology was really gonna be transformative. But at the same time, both of us were trying to apply it into biomedicine and we, ultimately became frustrated by the same observation, which was that although this technology was amazingly powerful, because of the way it was used in biomedicine was having pretty limited impact. And that's because it was largely being used as an analytics tool. And what I mean by that is what you saw is people doing traditional bio experiments, right? You set up a large scale high throughput experiment you know, it runs for a very long time and generates a very large data set. So if you were to runs for months, potentially, you publish a paper and then the AI machine learning teams get that data from the paper and analyze it and try to understand, you know, patterns that they can extract. And then they write a paper about the patterns they found. And what you find is that one, the, the AI stuff is on this cycle that's many years long, you know, you're reading papers and analyzing their data. You're making predictions that never really get validated. They don't really close the loop onto new experiments. And that was just leading this to this situation where your products were, as a, as a machine learning person, really limited in, in, in their impact. You didn't really control an experimental apparatus that could verify your prediction. And even if you did, most of those experiments take a very long time to, to run. So. It was very hard to learn even if your algorithms really worked. And that just led to this sense that we were not making the most of the AI tech. And it was because we were trapped in this situation where the, the experiments were, doing, were done in, in essentially a totally independent way to the AI machine learning work. And we really wanted to overcome that. We wanted a situation where we could do data science and machine learning today and make predictions tomorrow and know the truth of those the next day after. Because that's really what makes the machine learning so impactful in tech is really the close coupling of the data generation to the, to the actual machine learning analytics. And that cycle of learning is just very fast. And that's not at all what we saw in the community in 2018, when Peyton and I were both saw the end of our times at Google and Stanford uh, coming up and really wondering, what are we going to do to solve this problem? Is there somebody who's working on this? Is somebody integrating experiments in, in, in the AI tech? And ultimately, we found, looked around and said, we think we could do this. We think we could found a company to bring machine learning as close as possible to the experiments. And we realized that antibody engineering was really the right place to do that. It was a hugely important problem with enormous potential impact, both from the business perspective, as well as on patients. And we thought we had a, a potentially novel approach to pursue it. So the sense that we needed to go found a company just grew and grew. So by the time both of us left Google and Stanford, it was clear that, that we wanted to do this. Amazing. And you've teed it up so nicely to talk about the problem that you're trying to tackle and the mission of Big Hat. So let's jump straight into that. What has the last almost two years now been like from forming the organization? Yet there's so many 
avenues you could take it that it's where do you start where did you go start and um, what has been the progress made yeah it's amazing it's already been two years just to put the groundwork down we founded big hat in september of 2019 we raised our seed round in october of 19 and we raised our a round in january of 2021 so we're five to six months into our Series A, and, and, and we're approaching the two-year anniversary of Big Hat. And it's been an amazing journey. I think one aspect of that journey is just to hone down what Big Hat is really all about. And, and the, the fundamentals of Big Hat are relatively straightforward. What we are doing at Big Hat is integrating synthetic biology technologies. Let's make, let's, that lets us design molecules and create them in the real world. And we've coupled that to machine learning technologies that can learn about the properties of those molecules and propose new, slightly different versions of the molecules that are likely to be better. And so we have a lab that makes these molecules and generates data about them. We have AI tech that can use that lab to make molecules and test its predictions and learn from that. And together, what we do as a business is we use this platform to take antibody or other protein therapeutics and improve their properties in a rational way very quickly. And because of that, because of the ability to do it quickly, because we can learn from data, and because we're not trapped doing, say, one specific property, but can learn anything that we can measure, Big Hat is able to generate and produce very high quality molecules very quickly, which is super important and valuable in the when you're developing therapeutic drugs. You want them in patients as soon as possible, and you want them to be the highest quality you can find. And, and that's the two avenues that Big Hat is really differentiating on. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Can you give us some insight then into what it's like to be part of the AI and ML team like on a day-to-day -day basis? What's a typical project life cycle? And for people listening who are not as familiar with the, with the biotech and, and life sciences aspect of what you do, can you walk us through how that's integrated into the machine learning and AI? Sure. I, it's a great question. Let me actually try to answer it in reverse, because I think that'll be the most, the best way to get an intuitive sense of what Big Hat is all about. So let's talk about Big Hat's laboratory technologies first. One of the things that's really been a huge, exciting, really huge, exciting advances over the last sort of five to 10 years is synthetic biology tech. So what this means, we at Big Hat today can have a sequence of characters that are a, a small string of amino acids. It literally is like a Python string. And we have the ability to synthesize a DNA molecule that would encode that protein. We can make that in the real world. We can take that DNA and put it into an extract of a cell, which will then synthesize a bunch of proteins as described by that DNA. And we can take that mixture of DNA and the protein that is described by the DNA, and we can pull out and the pure version of that protein. So we have a mixture of pure protein. And we have lots of instruments at Big Hat that can measure the properties of that molecule. How sticky is it? How resistant is it to heat? Does it stick to another molecule really well, pretty well, amazingly, like how gluey is it? Those properties are the key things that you need to know about a, a protein therapeutic. Does it stick to the right molecule? Is it stable? Is, can you concentrate it, et cetera? So this lab that we built lets us go from literally sequences that live in a database in Amazon to real physical molecules in just a couple of days and the measurement of the properties of those molecules. So that, that's the core backbone challenge. And you can see why we have AI tech. Our lab is incredibly fast, but it's still measured in days of work. It, it takes days and days to synthesize real molecules and measure their properties. So the challenge on the data science and machine learning side of Big Hat is what molecules should we make today? 
How do we learn from the properties of the molecules that we just made so that when we design a new round of molecules tomorrow that are again, slightly different and things we've never seen before, that they are in general better than today's molecules. That's the machine learning prediction problem at Big Hat, improving, really introducing mutations into ant to proteins or antibodies in particular that improve their properties. And we have lots of prediction models that tell you all sorts of things about the likely effect of mutations on all sorts of different properties. So that's the core challenge at Big Hat. So the thing that makes Big Hat such an exciting place as a data scientist or a machine learning practitioner is that we can go from a model, you know, you can train a model to predict some property of a molecule. We can go in a small number of days to not take the model, make novel predictions about you know, molecules we've never seen before. And we can synthesize those molecules in our lab and, and know their properties in just a few days. And that lets us learn very rapidly about the quality of our machine learning models. And so we, on a day-to-day -day basis as a data scientist or a machine learning engineer at Big Hat, not only are you doing the standard things that you're doing with data engineering and modeling and cross-validation and all that kind of stuff, but also at Big Hat, every few days, people are coming saying, hey, what molecules should we make? Can you make some novel predictions to really confirm the utility of your prediction? And that cycle, which we've been doing for you know more than a year now, has let us really make enormous progress on our ability to learn from the feedback the lab provides, really develop algorithms that actually work and making molecules that are better. And and that involves on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, doing your traditional machine learning stuff. People have Python notebooks and R open all the time, but they're really engaging with world-leading experts in wet lab science and synthetic biology to envision molecules that they should make mutants of that would be better, to really make them in the real world and test them. And of course, the data science of looking at this data and really convincing yourself that it's correct and that it's matching the, the predictions and all that is also extremely challenging and interesting. Super rich engagement at Big Hat between the wet lab scientists and the dry lab sort of machine learning scientists, which really makes Big Hat an extremely unusual place. It's just on a day-to-day -day basis, we've managed to get the teams working together. On yeah. that point, so as you talk about the teams working together, I, I wanted to ask you the question about how you've gone about building and, and running the team because what you guys are doing is so novel, it's greenfield in its nature, and it, it's quite specialized with the combination of machine learning, but also the science. So how did you go through the journey of building and growing the team from the concept to, to where you're at now? This was, I think, in many ways, the biggest challenge that Peyton and I faced early on. How did we avoid recreating the silos between that, that naturally appear in almost all companies between the experimentalists and, and the computational teams? So it was really critical at Big Hat that we not fall into that trap. And one reason that, one, one way we did that was to really articulate a vision of what we were trying to do that captured the notion that everyone was working together. And the way we think about this now, the analogy we like to use is that we're really a Formula One racing team at Big Hat. We build the car, we design the engine, we operate the car, we run the pit stops. Somebody at Big Hat is driving the car and the figure of merit is how fast can you go around the track? And that really captures the idea that's the core to like day-to-day -day work at Big Hat. It's a collective effort across many people with wildly different skill sets. Somebody is a, a race car driver, somebody designs race car engines. And everyone is collectively working both to design faster, bigger, better versions of the car, which involve feedback from the actual driving of the car. We have people who are operating the car on a day-to-day basis. They are experts on how the system performs, what it takes to get the most out of it. 
and you're cycling back all the way to the first principles of the design. What is it that we need to improve about the car to make it go faster, to make it be better, to make it be safer, et cetera? And so that captures, in some sense, the, the vision uh, have instilled at Big Hat of everyone is building a machine. The machine is Big Hat's platform. We are operating that machine. We're designing it. We're improving it. And the fundamental reality of what provides feedback on what you should do is the actual operation of that machine for designing real drugs with partners or in-house programs. Because really what matters ultimately is how fast you're going around the racetrack. And we are using that as our guiding light for what is what do we need to do to be a high performance team? What do we need to do to make the machine faster and bigger and better? such a great analogy and really helps frame the complexity of the problem but also how many people are involved to, to achieve the, the end goal mark i want to now get your take on just how big an impact this can have you and Peyton decided to launch your own organization because you saw a gap and you felt that there was an opportunity to introduce ai into biosciences so when you think about what can be accomplished in the few years ahead given how far we've come with machine learning over the past five years what are you most excited about? I, I love this question. I think part of the challenge of founding a company and running it is to simultaneously hold it in your mind both the what is actually happening today, what is the realistic capabilities of the of Big Hat today, while also trying to understand where do you think you're going to be in five years? How do you tell people that story? How do you and how do you make the two? eventually become one, right? Well, eventually you want the, the, the current big hat to be able to accomplish all that stuff that's five years out. And you know, today our goal is to scale up our platform and to really prove out in great detail that it moves the needle for designing drugs. But in the long run, if you fast forward five years, where do we expect and hope to be? I think the, the answer is also, both simple and extremely exciting. I think what we see ourselves is trying to really introduce a very fast iteration between that takes data about the performance of molecules for therapeutics, right? Is this, is it really curing the disease? Is it really safe to inject into people? And is it convenient? Can I take it in a way that is, is easy to do, that's satisfying as a patient? That we can incorporate that knowledge directly into the design of the therapies and that we can be, really realize the opportunity of data-driven drug discovery. So we can measure the things we care about and then create molecules that are great along all the dimensions that we can measure so that we can move drug development less from this sort of, I happen to discover a molecule, I'm super happy with it. This is a serendipity of science model to more of an engineering model where you say, look, here are the parameters that I care about. I need the drug to be able to do X and Y and Z and I can have confidence that I can produce such a molecule. That transformation from scientific serendipity to engineering deliverables is really what Big Hat is all about. Bringing a full circle then as you finish that point on Big Hat, final question from me, Mark. When you look ahead, you've given us some insight into the potential impact, but over the next year to two years for Big Hat, where do you expect the journey to take you, whether it's number of heads involved, the, the types of people that you're going to need to hire. And when you speak to potential employees, what, what do you tell them about Big Hat to get them excited? I think the case that we make for new data scientists or machine learning practitioners who, who are looking at Big Hat is, I, I think, we, we have a pretty compelling story. We're using cutting edge machine learning. So we have deep experience with deep learning tech. We're really at the forefront of the smart data revolution of using active learning and other approaches to collect the right data. And what differentiates Big Hat is that our product are molecules that really move the needle for people who 
are suffering from some of the worst diseases that you could imagine. Everything from COVID to cancer to autoimmune diseases. If we, we are building a machine that will let us create molecules that can help all of those different types of people. And so the exciting aspect of, as a data scientist or a machine learning practitioner or a big head is the opportunity to really work on something that's going to help enormous numbers of people, not just in a specific single instance, which is often what you, if you go into therapeutics, because you have one asset, but big head is platform could potentially impact the whole field of biologic drug development and, and really, you know, ri raise the tide for everyone so that the ships are all higher up. And we're living through COVID now. I think everyone has a growing appreciation of how important it is to make high quality therapeutics as quickly as possible because every day is another day that people are getting sick and suffering from these diseases. Mark, thank you so much for coming on today and, and talking to us. What you and Peyton have built and what you're doing at Big Hat is truly uh, amazing, very exciting, and the, the potential impact it can have to, to life sciences and, and healthcare as a whole is, is really remarkable. So we wish you, the team, and everyone at, at Big Hat the best of luck in, in achieving that. Thank you very much. It's been a, a complete pleasure chatting today, and I really hope that people will take a look at Big Hat's website. You know, it's at bighatbio.com and uh, look at all the opportunities we have in the AI and data science space. You know, we really need world-class practitioners who want to help us design molecules. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.